So does everyone know the story of, of blessed, of now blessed Oscar Romero? Nope, nope. I thought he was a saint now. No, no, he's blessed. end of the 70s beginning of the 80s the start of the civil war and so what you had were kind of um you know uh people kind of fighting for their rights and becoming militarized you know uh guerrilla movements and, and things like that and so this is a situation where oscar romero becomes like the bishop of san salvador and prior to that point he's just been this nice humble kind of you know old school rigid priest honestly you know um, there's this weird rule where uh, the government has can approve who gets appointed bishop, um, and so they didn't want to approve any any priest that would be, actually do any real change. You know, in a, in a place like El Salvador in the 80s, when you challenge that status quo, when you challenge and say, hey, people have rights, people deserve to not fear death for repressions, people deserve to have economic stability, people deserve to have fair wages and property and things like that. It's a challenge, and they view that as being subversive to the government. One homily, and one Sunday during, during Mass, he, he said a homily, he said, before the law of man, there is the law of God. And so I order you, in the name of the church, return to God and stop the killings. And that was the last straw. The government was not going to take that kind of direct questioning anymore. The next day, he was celebrating Mass, at the chapel where he lived and he was killed right before consecration. For me, like, you know, because that's where the country where, like, I'm from, to see that direct, like, how it's intertwined with the history of the country is like a real, like, wake-up call. On top of being Salvadorian, like, my family is related to him. My grand that's my grandmother's cousin, you know? They grew up in the same village, and my grandmother took, looked after his mom, you know, and he baptized my mom, and he gave her first Holy Communion, and he married my parents, you know. And the altar, like the, the chapel where he was killed, was the same chapel my parents were married at. My grandmother talks about him, and she doesn't say, oh, blessed Oscar Romero. She says, Oscar, first name basis, you know. Sometimes she'll, she'll, she'll say a story about him, and it's like with a slight annoyance. Ay, Oscar, yo le, yo le preguntaba alguna cosa y era, sí, no, tan seco. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, to me, it just really makes, like, the saint thing real. And it really just has, like, that connection to, like, kind of help me get my crap together. Of, like, you know what? Like, this is not just a fairy tale. This is an older brother in the faith, an uncle for me, you know? Like, this is an uncle in the faith. I'm reading his biography and just seeing the, the amount that he sacrificed to get to the place where he was able to be martyred. It's not about the moment that he said, okay, I know I'm going to be killed, and the moment of his death. It's about he was uh, an example, a holy man that sacrificed, that prayed, that had this practice of waking up in the middle of the night and praying, you know, going to the chapel and praying. Uh, he had this practice of disciplining himself of literally physical, physical sacrifice, you know, because it's not just anybody that can die for the faith. It takes a life having lived in sacrifice and in holiness to be able to finally give your life in that sense.